World Health Organization fails vaping 101. WHO has recently produced a report on e-cigarettes, and if I could give the author a grade, I'd give them an F for fail. But actually, I don't know who wrote it. Professor Peter Hayek is the director of Tobacco Independence Unit at the University of London. He said, practically all the factual statements in it are wrong. The WHO has a history of anti-vaping activism that is damaging their reputation. He said this document is particularly maligned because it contains blatant misinformation. So what does the WHO say? It begins by saying the wrong thing about smoking cessation. It says there's not enough evidence to support the use of these products for smoking cessation. But Peter Hayek actually did the research and published the paper that showed that e-cigarettes have an 83% higher success rate for quitting smoking than conventional nicotine replacement therapy. And Public Health England points out that there have been other reports that have produced similar results. In England, 50 to 70,000 extra people quit every year because of vaping. And in France, they say that 700,000 French people have quit smoking by vaping. The WHO is also wrong on teen smoking. It says that never smoking minors who use electronic nicotine delivery systems or e-cigarettes at least double their chance of starting to smoke conventional tobacco cigarettes. In countries where e-cigarette use is legal, like in England, New Zealand, Canada, and the United States, the teen tobacco smoking rates are actually at historically low levels. The WHO is also wrong on lung injury. It says that electronic cigarettes could be associated with, with lung injuries. It says that on January the 14th, the CDC reported 2,660 cases of e-cigarette and vaping associated lung injury with 60 deaths. But in fact, by December the 20th, the CDC had already determined that the vast majority of these deaths were due to the use of THC contaminated with vitamin E acetate. These lung injuries had nothing to do with legal nicotine vaping. WHO is wrong on secondhand vape. It says the aerosols in ENDS contain glycol, which is used to make antifreeze, and that ENDS pose a risk to users and non-users. Whereas Public Health England said there were no identified risks to the health of bystanders. It's also worth pointing out that e-cigarettes contain propylene glycol, which is so safe you could use it as a food additive in ice cream, which is completely different from ethylene glycol. It seems the WHO is deliberately confusing two different types of glycol. WHO is also wrong on skin burns. It says that e-juices can burn the skin and rapidly cause nicotine poisoning. This seemed to me so unlikely to be true that I actually took the risk and I tested it myself. I used three different types of vape juice from three different manufacturers with three different type concentrations of nicotine. And after two hours, there was no sign of any burn, and I felt particularly well. The WHO is also wrong about banning e-cigarettes. It says countries can choose to ban electronic nicotine delivery systems, and that they've already been banned in 30 countries worldwide to protect young people. Well, countries can ban whatever they want. They can ban gay sex, they can ban wearing religious items, they can ban women from driving. Just because you can ban it doesn't mean you should. And banning is not the only way to protect young people. For example, you could enforce existing age limits. You could ban advertising, especially on social media. You could use education and you could consider plain packaging. So why is the WHO blowing smoke about vaping? Well, if you look at the structure of their tobacco control program, you'll find off to the right, all this stuff about Bloomberg. So it's important that we look into that. So this is Michael Bloomberg. He's a self-made billionaire. He was the mayor of New York City, and he's currently running to be president of the United States of America. He's the world's 14th richest person with an estimated net worth of 58 billion US dollars. He's very much against tobacco, and he's actually spent already a billion dollars of his own money to fight tobacco, but now he's taking on vaping. 
who's planning to spend $160 million to push a ban on flavored e-cigarettes in at least 20 cities and states in the United States. He seems to think that he can use his money to buy city hall and buy state legislatures. But a blanket ban on flavors is a bad idea. Flavors help smokers to say goodbye to tobacco. They actually improve quitting rates. Also, independent adult-only vape stores will go bust without flavors. This would leave adult smokers with nowhere to get high-quality vaping supplies or to get expert advice on how to quit smoking by vaping. It would deny smokers their right to a less harmful alternative to tobacco smoking, and it would support big tobacco. Michael Bloomberg's anti-vaping crusade is actually a pro-tobacco crusade. which would endanger public health. And when he was asked why he did it, he comes up with some interesting information. He claimed on CBS News that vaping could reduce a child's IQ by 10 to 15 points. This isn't true, and he has no evidence to support this claim. So overall, I think the WHO would be much better off if it ignored Michael Bloomberg and his eccentric views on vaping. WH report has been decried by experts from around the world. In England, they've described the report as misleading on several counts. It misrepresents the available scientific evidence. In Canada, the report has been called recklessly dishonest and dangerously misleading. In New Zealand, they say that they cannot be trusted. In India, they say that WHO has transitioned from caution to spreading misinformation. In England, they're saying, I'm already getting calls from healthcare professionals who now think that vaping is more dangerous than smoking because the WH report misleads and confuses. They've been misinformed by an organization that claims to care about health. The WHO says it strives to build a safer, healthier world for everyone everywhere. If they really want to do that, they need to ditch Bloomberg and follow the science on vaping. I'm Dr. John Oyston, and I approve this message. This was not funded by vaping, tobacco, or pharma. Thank you for your attention.